I have all these little pieces pulled off of our rotating box that we did in yesterday's episode. And today, we've got our eight searchlights, our four different types of radar, one of which we've concluded is probably not radar, and this little piece right here for the catapult. And we'll be doing those with the light gray. So we're done with the dark gray. Now, let's see if this is going to come off a little better. In other words, the double-sided tape is here, and this is just the regular masking tape. Oh yeah, that's going to work really good. Hey, I'm going at this like I'm a real pro. You'd think I'd done this before. And the last one. Okay, we only need five. So I'm just thinking here, while I'm skinning the tops off of these things, uh, this radar unit here that I was talking about a minute ago, radar unit number one, at least Trumpeter calls it a radar unit, and yet we don't think it is, I wonder, could it possibly be in our new book that we got last week? Let's take a look. I'll bet it's in there. Now apparently this book is also available as an e-book or an, an EPDF. In other words, you'd be able to go through the book. Hey, what's this? I've damaged it already. Anyway, you'd be able to go through it electronically like a, a word search. And if this isn't radar, and it's part of the fire control, you just, you know, I was going to say Google in fire control, and it would, you know, highlight everywhere in the book where that word was. And whereas with this, you sort of got to try and figure out where it is, that almost looks like it, but not quite. Um, well, I'll start paging through here. I know you don't want to watch me paging through this, so it might uh, I might come to it right away, and I might be the last thing I see. So, remember when we made these? We wondered what they looked like. Okay, here we go. There's a section on fire control, and in all likelihood. It's going to be in here. Now they're kind of, kind of rounded and dome shaped. Here we go. Here we go. This is them. Fire control. And it's for the heavy AA artillery range finders. Okay. Doesn't say anything about radar. So the guy that said that it wasn't radar, well, he was right. Okay. You know, by the way, I sure do appreciate the comments. I uh, don't want to try and pretend I know it all because I sure don't. Especially on something like this. Everything else I know it all. Okay, I was kind of half faking it there in the table of contents at the front there. I did find out that there was a section on fire control. So, yeah, I knew I could narrow it down. However, um, I did not know that these were in that section. I, but I was pretty sure they would be, unless they really were radar. Anyway, oh, another thing I should clarify about everything else, I don't know at all. So I'm mounting all the little pieces onto the box for our turntable and I get to number four here and I'm thinking, hey, wasn't there a little ladder? I guess I must have accidentally uh, broke it off somehow. Well, maybe it fell off. 
I have glued it back on here and uh, I've just glued it back on using the Tamiya Extra Thin same way as it was before now one of the viewers made the suggestion why not tack it on using the Tamiya Extra Thin and then later reinforce it using CA so obviously it didn't hold before so I'm going to just try that let me get my other glasses on so I can see what I'm doing there, now I can get in closer okay, now I don't want to overdo it here I'm pretty sure I've got it on there now under the top Okay, now we'll let that cure and it'll probably be several times stronger. Okay, may as well start out with our easy stuff here. We'll get this uh, piece of the, uh, I was going to say conveyor. Uh, and then we'll do the, the spotlights or the floodlights. The spotlights. Then we'll try these on the rotisserie and see if that works and then maybe maybe these will work but I don't think so. Anyway. Now most of this piece is going to be hidden anyway. Missed one. May as well do them all. Do them in order.
Now, these ones here may not work with this. the one with the ladder. Take a close look at him after. Four or five of the floodlights actually turned out pretty good. But there was uh, three or four that uh, the glue w had w worked its way into the grill work. And you didn't really notice it when you were just... Uh, looking at the brass but once the paint covered it all up well then it really you know showed up uh, and that is the uh, glue that's not that the paint was too thick I am pretty sure that when we were going through the book there a little while ago, I saw these very same pieces accurately drawn out. And it would have been kind of nice maybe to have included them, but you know this segment is really long in the tooth already. So I'll wait until we're actually mounting them on the ship. Then we'll look them up. All these pieces now are about as dry as they're going to get. And I have just washed my hands with warm soapy water and the reason being this type of paint uh, it's almost powdery and if I was to touch it with a greasy finger it's gonna take on sort of a glossy appearance and I have to be 
<clears throat> rather careful when I'm removing these that I don't handle it any more than I have to. Quite often what I will do is I will take my fingers and I will rub the, my fingertips on my shirt or something before I handle something like this because um, like I say, I don't, I don't want to be handling it more than I have to here. And uh, if I was to try and repaint this, so why am I handling it again? I don't need to pick it up. Uh, so if I was to try and repaint that, every little brush stroke, no matter how good you think you are, it's going to, uh, it's going to show up. There, there's just no way you can brush with a brush like you can with an airbrush which we will talk about in a minute. And by the way, thank you for all the comments. Uh, well, like I say, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. No, which one of these was unit number two? I'm gonna have to check the manual because these do have the, uh, some of them, the base is the same side, same size, and it would be possible to uh, glue the wrong one in the wrong place. So anyway, uh, well maybe we will talk about the airbrush right now and I'll put these away later. Now here's the thing. All of the comments that I got, and thank you so much for the comments, they all dealt with cleaning out the airbrush. There is probably nobody that is more meticulous than I am when it comes to cleaning it out. Uh, the the little nozzle and so on, I, I go through, when, when I clean this thing out, I go through uh, four different baths. First of all, first of all, I will take and I will run some in, well, after I dump the paint out back into the, into the jar, the excess, the extra, well then I'll, I'll put some isopropyl in here and I'll run it through and I'll take a little brush and I'll clean, clean the inside of this out mainly so that the next bath is as little contaminated as possible which is just a mason jar with isopropyl in it and I will immediately put this in there and um, and I will, I will take this off, I will take the nozzle out, I will take it all apart and I will immediately start soaking stuff so that it can't uh, well, there might be some residue that will be drying in there. I mean, there has to be some drying. It's got air going through there. So, uh, and, uh, the bottom line is, I'm pretty sure it's not uh, a cleaning problem that, that causes this to not want to work at low pressure anymore. But there is something that I have just done after I cleaned it up this last time. And that is, I have always just tightened this finger tight before. This time, what I did was, I used the little wrench and it's probably, I would say, twice as tight as finger tight. You know, like I didn't just reef it on there, I, I just, just tightened it up. And my thinking is that possibly the little nozzle is not being sealed at the back and at the front. Because if it isn't, then there's going to be a bit of uh, sort of back pressure and it's going to be working against itself. That's the only thing I can think of. So the next time I spray, we'll, we'll just see. Uh, is it a case now of uh, uh, that that was the problem? I'll know right away. And uh, I don't want to have to clean it up again for nothing. We'll just wait until the next time I use it. So it's thank you for all the suggestions that maybe I'm not cleaning this right. Uh, trust me, it's clean. And uh, <laughs> and I also use uh, compressed air to, to you know, to uh, clean out all the little parts in there like I'm I'm not going to try and describe how this thing works, but as soon as I got it, I took it all apart because I want to see how does this work exactly. Well, you know, if you look at all the little parts, you can see how it works. Anyway, I'm pretty sure, 99% sure, it's not a cleaning problem. It's a uh, mechanical problem. And I think possibly I may have solved it. Well, I'll know the next time I use it. So anyway, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, putting these away. I gotta look up and see which one is number two. Okay, radar unit number two looks like this. So that's obviously this one right here. And then obviously this is number four. So this has to be number three.
might be quite a while before we actually need these. Like these go up near the top of the ship and that'll be some of the last things we'll be doing. So I'm going to put my cellophane wrap over the top of them again try and keep as much dust off as possible. I'm pretty sure that you picked up on why it was I used the paper and the idea is so that when I'm moving these tins around in case I get a little bit uh, aggressive and things start rattling, uh, it'll just help prevent the sharp corners uh, on these parts from losing their paint on the inside of the tin, even though the inside of the tin is extremely smooth. It could sort of chip it off and I don't know, it's just a thing with me I guess. Now I want you to notice I'm rubbing off my fingertips on my shirt and um, what I want to do now is try and get these parts together with as little scratching as possible here. And there's just no way I'm going to be able to you know, show you this without uh, covering it up. <laughs> I mean there's no way I'm going to be able to do this without Anyway, we'll get it yet. Okay. You know what? Maybe if I put the camera over there, that might work better. Okay, let's try it again here. Okay, so obviously this is going to be the bottom because that's where the paint didn't get. In other words, that's the part that was stuck on the tape. Try and get it in this hole like that, and then we will have a very hard time not scratching the side here. Maybe if I sort of pull on this little part here, there, just wiggle it into place there. Now, if I can do the others like that, should be all right. I was watching a James Cameron documentary the other day on the when he went down and looked at the Bismarck and one of the things that he came across was one of these searchlights and the conversation went something like that something like this he says what's that or somebody says what's that and then Cameron says it's a searchlight and of course once he said it it was pretty obvious and I immediately thought of these little parts here Oh, what's that on there? Did I scratch that? Yeah, very gently here. No, just a little piece of dust. I am very happy here that I used the two tones of gray because the searchlight itself really stands out against the frame that's holding it up. At least that's my opinion. It might not be realistic. I can well imagine that on the real Bismarck everything was the same color basically. We've talked about that before. However, on each one, I did actually, unfortunately, scratch it when trying to uh, get the bracket in. You can sort of see a little scratch there when I, when I slid the bracket up so that the peg would get into the hole. So I'm going to have to take my little brush here and just touch it up. And by the way, as long as we're talking about it, uh, this is the little brush that I will use to clean out the nozzle uh, on the airbrush. And I want to emphasize carefully clean out the nozzle because I can tell by the way it's made. It's extremely fragile on the end there. It could be easily uh, bent in. Anyway, uh, see if we can fix up some of these scratches here. Each one of these has a scratch more or less in the same place of different lengths and I think this is probably the worst one right here. You can see the scratch right at the end of the brush. Now one of them uh, it had uh, the scratch was so insignificant that I'm not going to try to fix it because I'll probably just make it worse. And here's another bad one right here. And uh, another one had a tiny scratch on both sides. So uh, otherwise uh, yeah I got it pretty well. You may as well say fix every single one. So I'm going to slip on the micro lens and I will try and show you what I'm talking about 
when I say that, you know, there's just no way that you can touch up uh, an airbrush job and not have it show. Now, those of you who have watched a lot of my YouTube videos, you will know that uh, I'm not artistic. In other words, if somebody was to give me a piece of paper and a pencil and say, Ron, draw a picture of a horse. Well, I would probably have the uh, head and tail on the right end and uh, it, the ears would be in the right place and it might look a little bit like some sort of a horse or a donkey or who knows. However, it just wouldn't have that finesse. Uh, I'm just not artistic. In other words, Bob Ross, I am not. All I can say here that's even close to Bob Ross is, let's see if we can just put a little happy patch right here. And you know what? We'll see what that looks like tomorrow. Thanks for watching.